Hello all, I am Dr. Shweta Santalia from Hame MRCOG. Today we will be discussing about sexual assault. It's a 2018 talk and it is a very important talk from exam point of view because they always ask you how you will uh, do the screening for infection, uh, what the early evidence kit contain and all that things they ask you. So you should have the basic idea about this talk. I am Hopeful that after listening to this, you'll be confident about this information. So let's start. So what is sexual assault? Basically, if you see, it is common thing. Sexual assault is seen in one in five women between age 16 and 59. So if you see almost 20% of the women in the reproductive age group, 16 to 59 years, have experienced sexual violence. So this is an important figure that almost 20% of women are suffering due to sexual violence. If you see 35% of the women worldwide have experienced some or the other form of violence, physical or sexual, either partner or non-partner. So 35% of the women are suffering from violence. Around 90% of the victim, if you see, of the serious sexual assault, they knew their perpetrator. This is very important that 90% of the time it is from their relative, means somebody who they know already, their relative, their friend, their partner. Even they say that up to 50% of the time it is from the partner. So 90% they knew, 90% it is not the stranger, but the people known to them. 20% are suffering and some or the other form of violence happening with 35%. If you see the percentage, it really become important that this is not an uncommon thing. And as it is common, they want you to know that how you will manage them. Now, if you see, if this is from the infographics of uh, sexual assault. So if you see in England and Wales in 2016 and 17, the same as I told you, 20% are having this, 90% are knowing their attacker. And safety and protection is something we should be worried about and taken care of. Now, Sexual Offense Act of 2003. This is, this act says about what is sexual assault, what is assault by penetration, and what is rape. Very important to understand these definitions because sometimes you don't know how it is different. So if you see sexual assault, it occurs when a person intentionally touches another person and the touching is sexual and the other person has not given the consent. The absence of consent is very important. The absence of consent is the defining factor in Sexual Offense Act. So absence of consent is really, really important to define any sexual assault or rape. So if you see here, we saw that the touch is intentional, sexual, and without consent. So this is sexual assault. Now, what is assault by penetration? If you see assault by penetration means person is penetrating the vagina or anus of another person with any part other than penis. That means this is not by the by penis, but by any other organ, like it could be finger or any other organ, any other body part, or it could be an object. It is penetration, but it is not penetration by penis. So that is what they want to tell that assault by penetration. While in rape, the penetration will be by the penis. So this is how this assault by penetration and rape differs. These both are serious sexual assault. This is sexual assault simply, and this is serious sexual assault. The punishment also will differ. Again, here the penetration will be sexual, and there will be no consent. Absence of consent, as I told you, is very important to define any sexual assault, according to the Sexual Offense Act of 2003. So what is the ideal age for consent? This is also very important. Sometimes in EMQs and SBA, they will ask you, which is what and how you will punish or will you refer them to safeguarding services or what action you will take. So what is the age for consent for sexual activity? This is important. If you see, age of consent is 16 years. 16 years for both men and women. That means 
any form of sexual activity consent meets the age of 16 years or more. So if anybody who is less than 16 years, are you going to label it as rape? Yes. You can message in the chat, yes. No, 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 yes. Okay, my dear. So if you see, 16 or more can give the consent, but less than 16 year in the same peer group. Same peer group means somebody who is 13 year and having sexual activity with another 13 year, then it's acceptable. So something between 12 to 16 years and their same age group, like 13 to 13, 14 to 14, 15 to 15 years, if that kind of sexual activity is happening, mutual consenting, then it is not labeled as rape. But 12 year or lesser, 12 year or lesser is a significant age because they cannot give any kind of consent. So 12 year or lesser will always be labeled as rape and you have to refer them to the child safeguarding services for the special care, for the specific legal protection. So 12 years and under is a significant tender age where you will not accept any kind of sexual activity. So age is really important. You have to understand just to uh, summarize it again. 16 or more can give the consent. Between 12 to 16, peer to peer means the same age group, sexual activity with consent is acceptable. But 12 or less, no kind of sexual activity is allowed. And that is always considered as an offense and special protection is available to them. So the age is very important. Now we'll see about the punishment. If you see the punishment, sexual assault, as I told you, sexual assault is minor, but assault by penetration and rape is the serious. So if you see the difference for sexual assault, maximum prison sentence will be for 10 years. While if assault by penetration or rape, it could go up to life if imprisonment. So this is really, really important for you to understand this act, especially the age. Sometimes they can ask you about the sentence, how much you will punish. And sometimes they will ask you about the definition, what is sexual assault? What is assault by penetration? And what is rape? Now, what you will do, once you come to know that an assault has happened, we have to go step by step. It's very important that we collect the early evidence, we be non-judgmental, we will fast track the women care because they are already suffering. They are already suffering because of the sexual assault. If you see the initial disclosure, they say that only 11% of the victim of sexual assault will tell the police about the incident. So only 11% are informing the police, which is very less. Sometimes women might not be willing to go to the police. They do have other options. They not necessarily go to the police. They can come to the emergency department. They can go to the SARC. We will discuss about SARC, which is sexual agencies. They can go to the community health. They can go to the GPs, uh, like uh, uh, the where they can get examined and get collected the evidence if they want. So this is really, really important that a non-judgmental fast track care in the beginning to the women because they are not always willing to go to the police. What we will do in the beginning, first we have to take a detailed history. So detailed history means we will ask the women time and place of the incident. What was the nature of the event? Was there any drug or alcohol involved to facilitate the assault? Exactly what happened? By whom? Where? These questions are really, really important to know what kind of event it was. Is it really sexual assault? Was it under drug and alcohol effect? Because that further make it more grievous hurt and the punishment will also be more. So these are important factors in history. The other important aspect is the recording. You have to record the notes verbatim. Verbatim means exactly whatever the woman has told. You have to mention it in her words in the medical record 
because it could be an evidence in the court later. So there should be no manipulation and we should write it exactly in the same word, which is verbatim. We will ensure that the notes are accurate. We will avoid any discrepancies because if there will be discrepancy, the, cred the credibility of the notes will go. Then it cannot be used in the court. So avoid any discrepancy, write it in the women own words and it should be accurate. Try to be non-judgment. Believe the complainant because she has come to you for the help. Don't try to manipulate her. Don't try to disbelieve her. Try to be as sensitive, as empathetic, and as non-judgmental as possible. This is very important aspect of the care in the beginning, but take proper history and document it properly. Now, the other aspect is about the women's safety. Immediate need of women protection sometimes is very important if she knows the assailant. So for that, sometimes you have to inform the police for her safety to provide her home to stay, housing facility, that all special agencies are there which police will arrange. So you can inform the police and then accordingly it will be arranged for the women's safety. Or sometimes you may have to inform the police against the women advice. This will be done when in cases of domestic violence, where the children or other people are also at risk because of the asylian behavior. Not only the women, but her children also are at risk. So even sometime without her consent, you have to inform the police for her and her children's safety. So that is the important aspect of immediate care, step-by-step -step care, first detail history, provide her safety, provide her protection, provide protection to the children if needed. This is what your first step will be. Now the second step will be examination. Examination is very important because right examination and right documentation, as I told you, it is an evidence and it could be needed later in the court. So it should be done properly. For each injury, you will be recording the location, shape, color, type, size, and pain. Was it painful means it is a deep injury. So sometimes from the bony landmark or bony prominences, you will label it that it is two to three centimeter above the elbow joint or five centimeter below the knee joint. Like that, you will describe the injury in detail. That is very important. And for examination, sometimes everybody is not allowed to do this collection of forensic evidence because we don't have the expertise for that. So local gynecologists cannot do that. So it's important that a particular person who has the expertise in that will do. So what will happen if she will come to you like a local gynecologist, if she comes to you, you will be having the early evidence kit. So you have to take help of early evidence kit to take the forensic evidence, to take the collection of mouth rinse and urine. These two are indispensable need of the early evidence kit. So these two are must, and other thing available in this is toilet paper sample. So if the women wish to have forensic evidence collected, she should not be washing or wiping the genital area and she shouldn't eat or drink because you want the mouth rinse for the DNA evidence if there is oral penetration or she shouldn't pass urine because urine can give you idea about any drug, alcohol, any toxicology agent which has been used to facilitate the assault. So these two things, three things are very important that you will tell her that if she wants to get the evidence collected, don't watch her wife, don't eat or drink, don't pass urine. And then contact the police or SARC, which is Sexual Assault Reference Center to discuss. Because they are the ones who are going to arrange for the forensic evidence. Sometimes the woman is not willing to go to police or sometimes she doesn't want to report, she doesn't want but then also you will offer them the forensic evidence because later on she might change her mind. She might go want to go to the court later. So the initial evidence, the early evidence and the forensic evidence is really, really important for her later. This is an important aspect of examination and early evidence. So if you see the minor injuries, which does not require suturing, you're not going to clean that. Because that sample, some sample you might collect from there for DNA evidence. If you are unsure of the type of trauma, it is better to make a 
careful and concise description. As I told you, how many centimeter above from the bromine prominence, how it is looking, is it looking deep, what is the size, depth, color, everything you will describe because it is a piece of evidence. If it is possible, if the women give you written consent, in that case, you can even photograph the injury. If the injuries are non-genital, you can photograph it. And for that, there are experts with the police. So they can photograph the injury if written consent is given. And for genital area, there will be colposcopy guided pic. So that will help in the documentation. That will be the chain of evidence which can be produced in the court. Chain of evidence is actually a legal consent which should be used for all sample. Means it should be labeled properly and all the evidence like by whom it has been done, all the person handling the sample, the time, everything should be written properly. And there should be an unbroken paper trail account. So that is chain of evidence. It's very important for evidence and court of law. So this is all about first initial history, examination, forensic examination, chain of evidence, as well as providing the women the protection by giving her housing arranged by the police. So if you see early evidence kit, which is a common exam question, they always ask you, what is the part of early evidence kit? So as I told you, minimum mouth prints and urine collection is what you want. At least these two things is the minimum requirement of the early evidence kit. As I told you, collection of sample is very important. It is unvital evidence and it should be taken as the earliest. Because if you take the early urine sample, it will, you can detect drug and alcohol. If you take the mouth prints, you may get the vital evidence, the DNA sometime, if there is oral penetration. That's why urine and mouth prints are the must. Am I clear about this slide, early evidence kit? Because this is the most common exam question recently asked in the exam. Okay, great. Now, we have done the history, we have done the examination, we have collected the forensic evidence, we have provided the security and protection to the women. Then comes the need of pregnancy prevention. Pregnancy prevention, very important because the risk of pregnancy, if you see in the rape is 5%. So 5% is quite a lot. You don't want an unwanted pregnancy for the women who is already suffering because of that mental and physical trauma. So 5% is the risk. So you want to offer her emergency contraception. All women should be offered emergency contraception after vaginal rape if a reliable form of contraception is not being used. And women sometimes will not be aware of if contraception was used, was barrier contraception was used or not. So definitely you are going to offer all the women emergency contraception after vaginal rape. What method you are going to offer then? Sometimes we have the misconception that we cannot offer copper IUCD because there will be risk of sexually transmitted infection. Yes, there is a risk of sexually transmitted infection after rape, but you have to understand that copper IUCD is the most effective method of emergency contraception. So you can offer her all the methods, including copper IUCD. You can offer her copper IUCD, you can offer her ulipristal acetate, which is L1, or you can offer her LNG, levonorgestrel. So all of this you can offer her. There is no restriction for offering copper IUCD. But if you think that she is high risk for infection, you will take the swabs. And if the swabs will come positive, she will come later and take the antibiotic. But you cannot deny her copper IUCD because it is at risk of sexual infection. Remember this point because sometimes they'll simply ask you what emergency contraception you will offer. So your first choice should always be copper IUCD. As per the FSH, FSRH emergency contraception guideline, we offer copper IUCD for all. And in this situation, you want the most effective contraception because copper IUCD has the least failure rate. One per thousand, which is 0.1. So that's why you will always offer copper IUCD as the first choice. And if she refuses, this, then only you will go for oral as per the FSRH guideline. So the same applies for the rape women also. There is no change here for 
the choices of emergency contraception and offering. So you have to understand that you can offer anything to her. All are safe. The risk of pregnancy is 5%. And because a pregnancy can lead to psychological and physical complication, you will ask her her menstrual cycle and accordingly you will offer them the emergency contraception, which is really, really important to cater her need of pregnancy prevention. Now, after this, the important aspect is immediate care for management of infection as well as how you will follow up. A follow up is very important for a rape victim because definitely their mental health is also affected. Their psychological needs are also there. So follow up is really, really important. So if you see the immediate care, you will manage for the STI. You will give them all the prophylaxis required, all the screening for the STI. You will give them vaccine. This is all really important. Then there will be a special consideration for the vulnerable group. So what are these vulnerable groups actually? Can anybody tell me? No idea. Vulnerable group means people who are young, who are living in social housing, in poor health, single, separated, divorced, migrant, trafficking women, working in sex industry, transgender women. So anybody who is vulnerable, vulnerable physically and mentally, who are living in foster homes, who are living in uh, social service facility, transgender, migrant people. So they are vulnerable. Some are some mentally challenged uh, girls like uh, who are mental capacities affected. So they are vulnerable for all this activity. So you have to offer referral to the mental health services, safeguarding services, multi-agency risk assessment conference. So these all are the people who are going to help them. For vulnerable group, you have to understand if the mental capacity is affected, then you have to uh, document the Gaelic competence for under 18 age. Is all we have covered already in consent. So vulnerable group is really, really important because you have to uh, contact the child protection services, social services for women under 18 who are vulnerable. So that is the important aspect about vulnerable. Now, ongoing follow-up and support, as I told you, Sexual Assault Referral Center, SARC. SARC is really, really important. Presently, there are 40 functioning SARC in UK. So SARC is an important organization. They are working in alliance with the hospital. They work 24 hours a day. They offer forensic examination. They offer facilities for the non-police referrals, crisis worker, to support the victim. They give them immediate aftercare as well as follow-up services and psychological support. So SARC is important whenever they don't want to go to police, they can go to SARC on their own. Self-referral to the SARC can be done. SARC is going to give them forensic examination, evidential examination, as well as aftercare. So that's the important aspect. And SARC is a multi age work as a multi agency partnership to improve the health outcome as well as the justice outcome. So it is not only important for health, but also important for justice outcome for victim of rape or sexual assault. So if you see, SARC is really, really important for immediate care as well as the later on follow up for the women as well as the psychological support for the women. There are some organizations which will help them where they can enroll themselves for later on support, like rape crisis, like refugee, like safe lives. So these are the organizations which will give provide the long-term support for them. So if we talk about screening for STI, most of the screening, this is an important exam question, that most of the screening should be done two to three weeks after the assault. Why two to three weeks? Why not before? Why not later? Two to three weeks because that is the incubation time of pathogens. You want to look for sexually transmitted infection, which could be chlamydia and gonorrhea. You want to look for, so you have to wait for the incubation period. So you are doing it two to three weeks after. You will be doing it by not. 
this all we have discussed in sexual health class so i am not go to in detail of that so 2 to 3 weeks is an important time duration and then again after taking the swabs and everything at 2 to 3 weeks you will be taking blood test at 3 month which is very important blood test at 3 month to screen for hepatitis b c syphilis and hiv this is also important sometimes they ask you that she has some sexual assault and when you will take the blood test you should understand that at 3 months at 3 months means at 12 weeks so blood test at 12 weeks and initial screening at 2 to 3 weeks is what you are going to do for sti screen as i told you prophylaxis prophylactic antibiotic against bacterial sti is rarely offered but you can consider in in the women who are at high risk of infection and you think that she is not going to attend for follow up if you doubt that then better to give her prophylaxis otherwise it is not a routine so never choose an option of routine prophylaxis but in cases of high risk of infection and who will not come for follow up you may offer the prophylaxis what about the hiv post exposure prophylaxis definitely it is important definitely you will offer it to all you will discuss with discuss about this with all the sexual assault women so you will talk with them about the hiv post exposure prophylaxis if they are not sure about the status of the assailant that was was that a high risk for the hiv so what are the high risk people if you see if they come from high prevalence group such as man from sub saharan africa a man who has sex with man homosexual man to man sex increase the chances of hiv transmission and man who is iv drug user so these are all high risk where you should insist on the post exposure prophylaxis because the chance of transmission chance of that person having hiv is high in that cases this become more important otherwise you will discuss about hiv post exposure prophylaxis all to all the sexual assault women now if you see about ppsc which is post exposure prophylaxis it should be started as soon as possible but within 3 days within 3 days at least you should start and continue it for one month four weeks you have to give it and during that time you will be following her up two weekly or sometimes if they have problem you will follow one weekly the starter pack is usually 3 to 5 days so you will first offer that call them up to 3 days Talk to them if they are comfortable with it. Give them the continued pack for four weeks with a follow up of two weeks, if no problem. This is how you will start PPSC and follow. -up. The another important aspect is the vaccine. Hepatitis B vaccine is really really important. They say that if you give the vaccine within six weeks, the chances you there is chances that you can avoid that infection. So you will accelerate the course. to 013 weeks or 012 months three doses you will give quickly within 3 weeks or within 2 months with a booster at one year at 12 month so this is how they may ask you that how you will give hepatitis b vaccine to her when you will give so ideally you should give at least within 6 weeks start within 6 weeks and you will fast track it by giving it at 013 weeks or 012 month this about vaccination as well as screening as well as the prophylaxis either against bacterial sti or against hiv this is important about the sti management for a rape now just to sum up the duration and management up to 3 days you have to give her ppsc if you if the women accept and then you will follow them weekly if any problem or two weekly if no problem at two to three weeks you will screen for sti within six weeks you will give them hepatitis vaccine and at three month you will take the blood test for screening of b c syphilis and hiv this is very very important table and they can ask you anything in sba from this table am i clear about this excellent thank you my dear thank you so much thank you okay so we discussed about forensic evidence we discussed about sarc model sexual 
Assault Referral Center, SAR, 40 SAR in UK presently functioning. It is very important. It is promoted by Home Office as a gold standard of care for the victim of sexual assault. And as we discussed, it will offer forensic examination. It will offer evidence without police being involved. So women can go to them, can collect their evidence and may not report to police now, but can report to the police at later date. Definitely the gynecologist on call cannot collect it because they don't have expertise on that. That's why this should be collected from somebody who has specialist training in that area. For gynecologists on call, we have already discussed about early evidence kit. We will stick to it. And we will further inform, according to the women wish, we will inform police or SARC or anybody who can help with the evidence. Now, regarding the forensic evidence, most important thing is this, which they can ask you in SBA. Swabs, up till what time you can take the swabs, up till what time you have to do the toxicology screen. So if you see the swab, you can take up to seven days after vaginal penetration, up to three days after anal, and up to two days after oral. Very important. Sometimes they will give you an option, different option. They will change the days and they will ask you what is correct. So you have to remember this, that up till seven days after vaginal, three days after anal, and two days after oral. This is what important of the swab. If you see the toxicology screen from blood within three days and from urine within two weeks, within 14 days, if you are suspecting drug facilitated. So this is also very important. As I told you, they can make an SBA from this and ask you changing the dates that when you will do what. So swabs and screen is really, really important to remember. Now, follow-up, as we discussed, follow-up is very important because they are mental as well as physical, both health is affected. So they will follow up, they will follow up with genitourinary medicine clinic, gum clinic, or with the GP, or at local SAR. Very important. They can follow up with anybody. And the follow-up appointment, as we discussed, if they are starting the PEPSC startup pack, which is three to five days, they have to follow either weekly or two weekly. Serological test, we have discussed that we will be taking at three months. But if she has taken PEPSC, you have to delay it to four months. So you will be taking at four months. One week, four weeks, four weeks of PEPSC you are giving. That's why you are delaying it by one month. So in place of three months, you will be taking at four months the serological test. Pregnancy testing may also be necessary sometime because sometimes the women might not take emergency contraception. So after three weeks of unprotected sexual intercourse, you should do the pregnancy testing. Look for that. The women might opt for the termination of pregnancy if she's pregnant because it is an unwanted pregnancy. So it will go under the abortion law clause C. Clause C on the social ground. So this is important that she can terminate only up to 24 weeks according to clause C. This is important that you detect it and ask them what they want to do at the right time. The long-term psychological effect is very, very important because there could be depression, there could be anxiety, there could be post-traumatic stress, there could be substance misuse, self-harm and suicide. This is important because in one study, they have showed that up to 20% of the women has been suffering from mental health problem after the rape. It is important for you to help her. It is important for you to advise her about enrolling in rape crisis, refugee, safe life, all these organizations which will help them because there are the people who have suffered the same things are uh, discussing amongst themselves about how to cope, how to live life effectively and happily. So that's important for you to take care of her psychological need. Usually in post-traumatic stress, they will re-experience the incident. Sometimes they will hyper aroused means they will be having difficulty in concentrating, irritable, sleep problem, or sometimes they will be very numb, emotionally numb. They will not feel anything. So both ways, either they will be super sensitive or they will be insensitive 
both ways it is very much traumatic for the women so we have to take care of a psychological need as we saw that in this uh, sexual assault talk you have to understand about what kind of care you want to give to her initial history initial examination initial examination collecting the early evidence provide them the safety in the beginning and later on you have to look for the pregnancy prevention sti screening and the follow especially for the vulnerable group special support this is really really important from this talk to understand especially if we review it once if you see here the swabs and toxicology screen really really important the stable of duration and management very important from exam point of view as well as if you see this early evidence kit is always in question in the exam how to collect the dna evidence how you will take the swab is also very important how will document the injuries is also important what about the consent of sex what about the prison prison sentence what about punishment this also you should understand well according to the sexual offense act so this is all about this talk i'm very happy to discuss it with you all today and i hope that it will be easier for you in the exam when they give question from the stock you to solve now here a word about my upcoming course my upcoming course for the july 2022 exam is starting in december if you see the course feature it includes two courses it has a regular course as well as a crash course so you are getting all the things under one roof you don't have to rush here and there and you don't have to look for anything else you will get a seven month course at a very affordable prices there is 41 sessions if you see the sessions will be involving the question and answer solving because as i always tell my co student that question reading is the biggest art excluding the options is the biggest art reading the emqs are the biggest thing of concern which will give you success if you do it in right way so definitely question and answer sessions will be there we will be having a detailed discussion of all the guideline based targeted point and as well as the recent talk all the important summaries will be with you so you don't have the stress of making notes on your own because we are making it for you there will be module wise sba and emq question bank there will be mocks after each module which is really really important for you to assess yourself these mocks are the formative assessment which help you in your summative assessment which is the part 2 july exam the mocks are really a helpful thing and the students are very happy about the mocks quality of question of the mock as well as the explanation which give them a quick revision about all the important aspect of that there will be exam like scenario mock 2 which will be option gaini mock at the end for your practice for the exam like scenario which will help you in troubleshooting if you are finding anything while solving the question and giving the final exam there will be separate classes for fetal genetics ctg consent bio statistics contraception and neurodynamic graph why separate classes for this is because there is always this are really really confusing and most of the time students are facing trouble in this most of my course student are facing trouble with these topics so i have decided that i will take it as a separate session for you all to be very thorough with these difficult aspects because ultimately this exam is a norm based exam it depends upon how your colleagues are doing how all the students are doing there is no fixed cut off so if you are mastering in these aspect which everybody is facing difficulty definitely it gives you an extra edge over the others and definitely it increase the probability of you succeeding in exam there will be revision sessions after important module for you because it's a long course and definitely once you go forward and if you keep forgetting what you have learned earlier then it doesn't make sense so revision sessions are important question answer sessions are important the recording will be available with you if you could not attend the session and it will be available with you till exam you will be part of the group till you clear your exam so don't worry about the subscription of the group 
there will be flash card for last minute revision there will be emq discussion in the group there will be crash revision of recalled question and topics at the end that is the most important aspect to discuss the emqs and recalls at the end because emq are the one which are the troublemakers which are the one at end you face difficult this is important these all specialized feature i have made after learning after reading the mind of students that where they actually face the difficulty and definitely if you follow it properly it will help you in acing the exam in first attempt because nowadays getting exam is also becoming difficult you are not getting exam easily booking is also a big stress nowadays for the students there are many steps of booking and sometimes it's if you get the exam booking you don't want to waste your attempt you just don't want to give it half heartedly you have to be 100% prepared you have to be confident about your success so that's why i have made these all the features for you to succeed in first attempt because the attempts getting attempt itself is nowadays a big difficulty so this is my contact number this is my email id of mmrcog and if you want if you want to join the course for uh, july exam or if you have any query any difficulty regarding the exam you can always contact me on this number and i'll be happy to assist you all the course fee is 350 dollar for 7 months so effectively it comes only 50 dollar per month for you this is my uh, link of facebook group as well as the telegram group here we discuss in telegram group we discuss daily module wise questions which will help you in practicing every day some effort putting some effort every day definitely leads to big success as i always tell you all so this is really important that you follow the schedule as well as it's very important that you follow a right guidance in a right way because this is a long study this is a long time motivation and alone doing it is really difficult so group discussion and working in a group in a right guidance of a mentor definitely help you in succeeding so this is my group link if you want you can join the groups and the group link is in the description below of the channel once you click it you can join the groups so this is all for today i am very happy for you all to attend and uh, join the discussion today and hopefully it will makes a difference and my effort will help you in your exam thank you